Today, I'm going to bring you one of those sort of tactical things because what I'm hearing a lot is, hey, listen, I've got my goal. I've developed my plan. I know exactly, you know, the leads and how I'm going to fill the funnel and all that kind of stuff. I'm starting to get a little bit stressed out about my time. Like there's a lot of work that goes into executing on the plan and you got to execute on the plan over and over and over. I just had this conversation with the assassins. Um, all right. And so, uh, and by the way, if you, if you haven't quite finished out your plan, make sure you're on our company wide sales meeting. I've got a panel of top agents that straight up may have had a struggle this year. They conquered the struggle. You're going to hear a little bit about that. And then you're going to hear about what it is that they did to absolutely crush it in 2020. They're also going to share a little tidbit about what to expect in 2021 and what they're going to do to win. If you don't have the link for that, just DM me on Instagram and I'm happy to share that with you. Okay, that's going to be an incredible panel uh, uh, for 2021 planning. But here's the thing, from a timing perspective, I get a lot of, you know, well, what do I do? How do I create more space? And, and listen, the debate is out there, right? Who's the first person you should hire if you are busy? Tidbit, spoiler alert, it's not a buyer's agent. It's not a seller's agent. It's not a marketing person. It's an assistant, okay? So your first hire, if, you are, if you're running out of time, because here's, here's the reality. There are a lot of things that really need to be done. They're very, very important things. Communications with your sellers, communications with your buyers, you know, working with your marketing people, with your partner, working with your TC from your people, uh, making sure that your website is up. All of these things, they're super important, but they're $15 to $20 an hour work. And if you are looking to earn $15 to $20 an hour, then you should be doing that work. But if you're not, if you're looking to make 50 100, 250, 500, a thousand dollars an hour, you can't do the 15 to 20 dollar an hour work. You've got to create space to be able to do that. The way you create space is you hire the right person. So I'm going to go through my list of how do you do this. Number one on my list is you've you've got to figure out um you got to you got to change your mindset, right? Like we talked a little bit about it, but who who got you here isn't going to get you there. Okay. Like we the our businesses grow. The person that you are that got you to the point that you are is not the person that's going to get you to the next level. You have to grow. You've got to change or you've got to admit this is not my space. So that's number two on my list is you are the CEO. You are the CEO. Part of being the CEO is knowing what your strengths are and knowing what your weaknesses are. And, and here's the thing, I, I, I know there's a debate out there. Well, hey, listen, you identify your work weaknesses and you pour into them, you make them stronger. But I call bullshit, sorry. Like, I, I, I don't mean to ignore them, but the truth of the matter is, is if you have a strength, if you've got a superpower, that's your superpower. Figure out how to mitigate some of the, the, the loss of the pain by outsourcing your, the things that you're weak at, right? That's how you're going to hire. That's how you're going to do your thing. So let's go through the hiring process. Um, there, when you're going out to hire somebody, there's two different ways you can hire. You can either hire somebody and develop them, or you can hire somebody that's already developed. that's going to take you to the next level. I might suggest that there's some co combination of, of, of two, but you can go out and hire a, you know, a six or a seven and develop them to an eight or a nine, that kind of thing. But folks, you're not going to go out and hire a two and turn them into a 10. Okay. You can hire a six or a seven and, and develop them into a eight or a nine, but you're not going to turn a two into a 10. I just want to make sure that we're all clear, right? Um, it will take time. It will take energy. It, so you're going to pay for it. You're just going to pay for it in sweat. Or you can go out and find somebody that's already an eight, nine, or 10 that's going to have an immediate impact. They're just going to cost you more money, okay? So um, here's the process that we go through from, uh, from an organization standpoint in hiring. Um, and, and this, this is the, uh, it's a four step process, right? And, and the idea is that, that, that we take and we go through four steps of hiring because you can fool some of the people some of the time, but you can't fool all the people all the time, right? And each of us from a personality perspective are going to, in, we're, we're going to engage with the person interviewing differently. Now you may be saying, Hey, listen, I, but it's just me. Well, find a buddy. Okay. Find a buddy, figure out another agent have your coach interview them, uh, uh, ask a favor from your AC, like do something, right? But make sure that you interview them multiple times and maybe you're doing a three-step process or maybe you're the first interview and the fourth interview, all right? I don't know, 
but, but, but you've got to go through multiple interviews. Um, the very first thing that you've got to make sure that you're hiring to is culture. Okay. And here's how we go about identifying whether or not they're the right cultural fit. Um, you know, what did you do to prepare for this interview? What do you know about us? Um, what are your personal and professional goals? Those kinds of questions will develop whether or not they're the kind of person that's looking for growth, whether they fit your culture. You're going to get a lot of really great information. If somebody didn't do any research on you, if they don't know about your website, they don't know about your history, it's like it's on LinkedIn, Facebook, Instagram, like it's everywhere, right? Um, that's probably not the kind of person that you're going to want to have in your organization uh, because they, they didn't care enough about the position to do the homework. Make sense? Um, it, I think it shows uh, the, the mindset. Uh, second is skills, right? Uh, what makes you qualified for, for the position? Here's a really, really, really good question, right? How will you bring value to my team? Ask them the question because they need to know the answer. If they don't have the answer, then they're probably not looking at your organization and the way you need to function correctly, right? Remember, we believe in compensating people for solving bigger problems, right? Like, so if they're not looking for value that they can pour into your organization, then it's probably the, the wrong mind, mindset. All right, number four is gut check. Tell me what you think the position is. I'm asking the interviewee, tell me what you think the position is and let them talk to you uh, about it. Let them share some of their ideas you're going to find out from that whether or not they've got the growth or the limited mindset. And here you're focusing on your gut. This is your gut check. And the fourth is the CEO interview. Folks, listen, let's be super honest with each other right now. Okay. I don't care if it's consciously or unconsciously or subconsciously or whatever the consciouslys are. The truth of the matter is, is that when somebody is interviewing for a position, they are putting their best foot forward. 100%. Number two, the person who is interviewing them is also putting their absolute best foot forward. Here on the fourth interview, the CEO interview is the opportunity for you to cut the crap. Okay. This is the like brass tax. Hey, listen, you've had three interviews. The reason that you've made it to the fourth one is because you have the skill sets. Somebody believes you have the mindset. I want to make sure that you get the truth. Whatever they said that you were going to do, hard work, right? It's harder, right? Whatever they said was going to happen, it's going to be harder than that. This is your opportunity as a CEO to test whether or not they really are committed, whether they really want to work with you, if they really believe that this is a long-term position for you. Folks, I'm going to tell you right now, take my word for it. We've done it every way possible. It is always less expensive to miss out on the wrong person than it is to have to find out later and replace them, always, okay? So four-step interview, uh, We, from a mindset perspective, you've gotta make sure that you understand what got you here won't get you there. The idea is that you're bringing somebody into your organization and you are teaching them everything that you do, right? So that you can slowly work yourself out of a position. That's how you quote unquote graduate to the next level of your career and your, your business. I hope that helps. One last little tidbit. If you are looking for you in your interviews, you will never find them. You are a freak of nature. Okay. I, I get it. I'm a freak of nature too. Carrie's a freak of nature. Teresa's a freak of nature. Here's the bottom line. You are one of a kind. You will not find another one of you. So stop looking. Find the right person for the position that you're looking to fill. Find the person that's smarter than you in that space. And I guarantee you, your whatever you planned for 2021, it'll be small potatoes. Hope you guys have a great day.